off a few days. And why I'm wearing a very cool shirt straight out of Johnstown. There are cooler short shirts you can order at habitbook.com slash swag. Like one that says, ask me about my spaceship. Hello everyone. I'm particularly interested in moving beyond the trauma brain. What is the trauma brain? Well, I don't fucking know. But it does seem to be like this pattern of believing and interpreting information that reduces the choices that we have available in the world. Hold on one second, someone said they accidentally. Nate, what do you mean you accidentally bought one? Of course you're gonna own it, you bought it. And it's gonna look great. Thank you, thanks for supporting by accident. All right, so I'm talking about moving beyond trauma-inspired thinking and, um, oh, sorry, one last thing. Oh, if you wanted dark blue, okay, I wish you would have told me. I think I could have uh, adjusted fulfillment. We'll talk offline. Okay, so going beyond trauma thinking, this is particularly interesting to me right now because I am uh, just... Uh, I'm working through some shit personally and it has been so insightful because there are these like two parts to our internal experience that happen in such a way that you don't necessarily notice there are two parts so we've kind of got like our thinking system and then we have our thoughts and so we're like super aware of our thoughts and depending on our level of internal awareness and how smart we think we are, we can get really good at organizing our thoughts. We could do the best we have with all of our thoughts with all and and let's broaden this to include any kind of like information. So we've got all of the information in our thoughts and we like look through them and we feel we can feel pretty good about the way that we organize things so that they make sense. This is also akin to your frame of reference. So these are the things in your awareness. This is what's on your desk. What we often neglect to consider is the thinking system that puts this shit on your desk. So it seems like the thinking system is sort of like the subconscious. And it's like, hey, these things are important. So you're gonna wanna look at them and these things are sa aren't safe according to what we've seen and heard. So we're not gonna put those out there. And, and so often we think we're operating freely because we're making the best choice we can with like the four items that are here. But, Cause we're like, oh, do I wanna do this? Or do I wanna do this? Or should I do that? Or should I do this? But we forget that that, this, even the, the options have already been filtered by the thinking system or the subconscious. And the existence of that question, even on your mofo desk, is optional. And that is the slipperiest part because often these things are presented and we get all tangled up in trying to solve this thing, not realizing that the experience of the thing is optional. How could this look? What, what might this look like in real life? Let's say... Um, does anybody have anything that they're working through that they want me to use in a, as an example? Something that you might have here. Let me think. Let me think. Oh, so I'm all fixated on how the fuck does this thing work? How does the universe work? Blah, 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 blah. I cannot. I have not. It, it's like. Everything I view is through that lens, which at, which is like, okay, great. So that brings all this information here, but implied in the lens is like one, the suppo like supposition, the assumption that I can even understand. Two, it assumes that I'm perceiving correctly and that the information I'm sorting is valid and worth sorting. If somebody gave you like a box of broken things and you knew they were broken, you wouldn't take your time trying to put them together. You just like let them be. 
but we assume all the things that show up on our thought desk are valid. Um, it includes that I, I, my like, I like can, there's like an I. So all of these things are built into this frame. And so what I'm saying is we've got these frames, these thinking systems that we perceive ourselves to be free within not recognizing that there are other options. For example, if a person's self-worth had been impacted when they were a child because maybe their parents weren't available to attend to their emotional needs, then one of the things that they ask, one of the frames that they look for through is, how am I good enough? How do I prove that I'm worthy? Where am I gonna get love? But they don't realize that all of the information on their desk they're sorting because this question exists that doesn't even have to be answered. So that could change the options that they see available to themselves. So let's say they've got this frame. How do I prove that I'm worthy? How do I get love? It assumes based on, based on the experience that they had as a child, they don't know that they can receive without having to do anything. So they take their personal experience unless I attune to my mother, I won't receive love. And they use that the rest of their life to interpret experience. How to, how do, what do I need to do to get something? And so the choices that they look through, they're like, okay, do I want to be good professionally or do I want to be good personally? And so that even like that being a question or something on the radar is a function of their frame, which they can't see because it's what they're looking through. So we've got these experiences that we're trying our best to maximize, like the pieces contained within. And the point of this conversation is really to consider like, is that a piece you wanna keep? Like, is that the, is that the puzzle you wanna to put together? So sometimes um, we take, like for me, uh, so much of my uh, awareness had been around how do I fix myself? Which assumed that there was something was wrong, that I could do it, that um, it needed to be done, that there was something that could be done. See, there's like all of these assumptions and then you just kind of like attack it because you're operating in the thoughts, not considering how they got there. And so, one, it's like until you recognize, like one question you might ask that's like really trippy is how do, how do I get it right? You may be looking at your whole life through a lens of how do I get it right? Not recognizing that that's not a question that one, everybody is asking or two, that you even need to ask again, what are the assumptions in this one? That there's an I, that there's a right, that you can get it right, that it matters. Like all this stuff comes into before that's even on your plate. So what I found, and I opened with how this connects to trauma thinking, is if you have been violated or if, if you have felt violated or unsafe in any way, it seems like we come up and like maybe this is like addictive patterns or something it's like we come up with things that prevent us from living forward and so there's this problem that we keep having to solve so that we don't have to go forward but it's not really like it's not a real thing so an, an example would be like and an, and I guess it's helpful to kind of frame this conversation and saying that a lot of the research and development I've been doing recently is beyond the mind, beyond thought, and just sort of accepting the unknowableness of, of everything and that understanding is really impossible. And um, I forgot where I was going. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. All right, where was I going? Well, hopefully it comes back. Trauma thinking, research beyond the mind. 
Oh, okay. So I guess, all right. I don't think this is where I was going, but I can take it there. When we go back to this idea of like, is this right? Oh yeah, understanding is impossible. Thank you. Um, I forget. I forget. Okay, so when we take, when we look Let's take a break then, right? I was flipping through this notebook the other day. <laughs> it's on like we've got illustrations like this, this, this. It's just no one would know what any of them means, me included. Okay, let's get back to work. Are you ready? <laughs> So I was talking about, I'll forget that whole thing. Trauma thinking is important to me because there is like, I'm looking at like acute and chronic. So chronic trauma would be lack of access to resources, which it means they're not in your awareness. And that type of chronic exposure to lack affects your thinking in such a way that you operate with an impoverished model. So if you have continuously experienced lack of access to resources, one of the questions you might be asking, one of the frames you might be looking for is, why isn't there enough money? How isn't there, there isn't enough money. This this, um, I can't have what I want. And so no matter what information comes across your desk, they're all, it's all sorted in such a way that you continue to experience that because you are reinforcing that that is an, ex like it's, it's, you keep saying like, yes, this is an, ex every time you, it's like you assume the sale almost. So it's like, if I'm making coffee, it assumes that there's water involved. If I am asking those questions, it assumes that lack is involved. So that would be when we're talking about the thinking system and, and thoughts. You can only go so far with these. And if shit's still not working, then it's probably this, which is basically I'm calling it the thinking system, but it would also be your subconscious, which would be... A collection of ideas about how things work, how you work, how you and things work together, what's possible, what to expect, and basically just like your whole human manual. If you have been exposed to things that don't reflect love and pos prosperity, then what you have here might not be conducive to generating results that please you and you might try really hard like and say like okay well i'm i'm doing i'm i'm working so hard to get more money i'm working so hard to be able to do this but if you're always looking through a lens of why isn't there enough or how do i get better or when is it going to stop like you you're just going to keep asking and answering that question so so what can you do what the fuck can you do to uh update your subconscious i'm sure there are a bunch of things here's what i suggest this is what works for me and for my, my clients that i've tried it with basically you can evidence or bring into your awareness ideas you have about how things work and this can be kind of like embarrassing for some people at first even among themselves to be like holy fuck i really think that but be honest with yourself say like okay looking at these areas of my life one is which one isn't performing optimally despite my best efforts and you could say like okay i don't have harmony in my relationships or and what's crazy too is like you might not even know that harmony is possible you your experience of relationships might be so skewed that you can't even fathom what having peaceful supportive relationships are like and so you're not even shopping for them and this is where it comes back to like the thinking system where it's like we think we're in full awareness but we're in full awareness of what's in our awareness 
and the real it seems like the only way to really like un like you've got to be like very aware of reading everything <laughs> and being honest with yourself so so let's say we're going back to the relationships example there's an area that that's not functioning properly and you could be like look what the what the hell man this is what i think it should be like and that gives you a lot to work with because it lets you know what expectations and ideas you have which aren't grounded in they're kind of like top down we're given ideas top down that make our experience unpleasurable because we're waiting for the the thing that's up top when really that's a natural progression of here so we think of all these things before this thing as wrong or not real when they are this it is that so i see that a lot like if i'm coaching relationships there are uh, there's all this pressure around like titles and milestones and all these things when it's like don't you see that's like the tree that's growing and that's the fruit and it's not to be like mindful of those meanings but it's also to allow yourself the opportunity to, to be connected to the essence in such a way that you can actually enjoy the natural unfolding of the thing so often we have like the baby bird of like this huge thing eagle in our hands and we're like eh, it's not the big thing fuck it but it's like that's it starts here man and then it becomes that but when we shop for ideas when we shop for our lives based on concepts that we've gathered externally or have been uh that have been modeled to us we often find ourselves unhappy because we're like oh but it's not this what is this what is this so in reorganizing the subconscious one would be to get clear on what your expectations are and see if you can drop them all and be like look really i don't know if that's a exactly like what that would feel like i think it would feel like this which is why i want it so well let's be real then and list why i want it i think it will make me feel comfortable i think i'll feel connected i think i'll feel safe i think i'll feel loved i think blah 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 you hey what's this called it's plot no spoiler alert you can feel anything without the thing if you practice or you look for it, or you're open it, so, so you don't have to wait until you have that thing to feel those ways. You can feel them now. In fact, according to the law of attraction, quantum mechanics, and ever, everything is vibration, that's the only way to do it. So we've identified the expectations we have, we've identified the feelings we expect to find therein, which is why we want the thing to begin with. So we actually don't even need the thing, so you can drop that from your to-do list and just focus on the feelings. And if you focus on the feelings, then they probably will grow towards the fruit that you're looking for, but you can't just grab it right off. Then the other thing would be like, okay, what are my fears around having that? So let's say I did have phenomenal relationships. What might my what might my concerns be? Well, what if I what if I'm not a good friend? What if we don't have anything to connect on? What if I don't have time? What if they want me to buy them things and I don't have money? What if and so you have these fears and maybe you're aware of them or maybe you're not, but if you kind of this is like the best exercise ever. If you can like sit down across from yourself and and play like consultant and you say like hey self looking fly today cute shirt and then you say like all right let's talk about this for real so like why do you not want to do it but if you had to guess if you had to say something what would you say and maybe it'll take you a little while to open up a dialogue like that with yourself but you can get a lot of great information if you're like all right let's be real hats off pants <laughs> pants off let's be real like what do you really think here and you allowed yourself to capture that you'd be like oh yeah, okay and it doesn't matter if you think you should think that if you think it you think it and so our fears are often irrational and so the smarter we are the less likely we are to claim that we feel them because we're like i know i shouldn't be afraid of that yeah well fuck you are <laughs> who cares so you put it out there and you bring it down and when all of your fears are listed and the feelings that you want are available then you can start to work through those in your regular life and so you could look at your fears and say like i'm afraid that no one's ever gonna like me so let's say that's your concern you have to like poke at it until it like combusts 
because it's not true. It's just something that, it's just an idea that you have. And so when you ask that, you say like, all right, does anybody in my life like me now, like even just a little? You could be like, you know, I think so. And then you could look, start looking in the world. It's like, well, what is likable? And like, what do I like about me? And if someone else, you know, like, you, know, you just start to look for it. And then you bring in enough information so that your subconscious is like, look, we used to think it was like this. Apparently it's not. We're sorry. <laughs> you're free. And if you do that with all of your concerns, then it helps clear the block for you to move forward. To be honest, it seems like our natural progression or our natural inclinations is is to grow forward and create and be unique and adventurous and alive and and oh blah, blah, blah. but the reasons we don't do that are fears and they masquerade as constraints and ideas that aren't real. It's like whenever you're in either or thinking, do I want A or B? It's like, whoa, 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 homie, there's always a C and probably like a bunch of other ones. So when you feel like stuck and you're not going anywhere, it's probably just, you're not, a, you're not, you don't feel comfortable to do it. Otherwise everything would just naturally go that way. I have experimented personally <laughs> with not making myself do anything. <laughs> And like, just letting it all come to stillness. And at that place, surprising enough, it's like, wow, I, like, it took some time to build up some momentum and some confidence and some familiarity and like the skills and well, the conditioning. But it was like, eventually it was like, oh, man, it's so fun to push yourself towards something that you want. And whether it so if it's just like, it's natural. But it doesn't seem that way because we have so much practice having to force ourselves to do things that other people think we should do or that we said we would do because we think we should and like all of these thoughts it's just like the mind and the life they're often in 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 different places and because of that we experience all this tension and so it's like can you walk them back to be the same and at any moment this is the beauty good god if you never take anything from me please let it be this healing healing and fixing yourself does not need to take 17 years it doesn't need to take three months it doesn't need to take any time why why do i say that after i've spent four years pretty much in constant meditation constant increasing amounts of meditation because acceptance is the only thing that needs to be healed and you can open that door any fucking second and what is acceptance it's basically saying no judgment i don't how i am no judgment on how things are no judgment on how other people are i am going to allow myself to enjoy this moment despite that and because of this and whatever the fuck i'm going to enjoy this moment because this is the moment that i'm in that is acceptance that is joy that is the experience of love that is the destination that we think we're getting to with every other kind of process that we're doing is just that one place where we're like hey this ain't bad like i'm kind of relaxed and i'm gonna let myself enjoy whatever i'm doing any moment healed in a moment it doesn't have to be plotted in time you don't have to wait to get to an external destination or an internal destination to enjoy your mofo life this is where it is this is where it's at it's right here it's right here so this is like the rub of it like what a joke right it's like then what why do everything else well for the experience of it and that's that's like the cool part you can have and this is like going back to the mind idea it's like as humans there's so much that we have included in our thought system and passed down through modeling and conversation and whatever that this is the way life is supposed to be and so we try to do the best we can with the thoughts that are generated or the ideas that are generated about life but without questioning like wait wait is there more is there more does it have to be this way like is this it Which is to say, like, the idea of struggling to, like, I had a very strong imprint of, like, you got to work hard if you want it. Show them that you're worth it. Work real hard. 
And so no matter what was on my desk, except the things that I didn't know were work, that I, if like every, like I'm pretty blessed because the way things worked, like I didn't know things should be hard for me. A lot of things I didn't know should be hard for me, mostly because the adults around me weren't doing them. And so for me, a lot of things were really fucking easy because I didn't know they were supposed to be hard. But the things that I knew were supposed to be hard, I was like, don't worry, I'm going to show you how hard I'll work. I'm going to show you. And those could have been just as easy as everything else if I would have learned to let them. So anyhow, so the idea is basically like I thought to get to a place of peace and joy and continues to still kind of like work through this concept that I have to do this, then this, and then when this, and then this, and then this, and then this. And it's like, nah, girl, that's right here. Get there right now. And if you're not willing to do that, then there are probably some ideas for you around joy and safety. Safety is a big one. If you, going back to the trauma brain, if you've been in a place where your physical person or your access to resources or your perceived access to love was ever affected, the way that you view the moment might like depending on what system you had in place to process those emotions or those feelings and what's in place now depending on a bunch of different things it's possible that you don't even feel safe to relax enough in this moment to enjoy it because the bottom might fall out somebody might attack you something could go wrong you might have like there's probably a bunch of things that are preventing a person who's been through some shit to be like okay yeah sure No, I'll find joy in this moment. I'll be right here in this moment. Their physiology is like, no. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) No, you won't. No. And, And with that, knowing that that's there is so freeing because it's like, great. When I'm having that response, when I'm overdoing it, I know there's nothing like, it's not me. It's just a habit that I've practiced and I can relearn habit. I can relearn a pattern. And so with something like that, how do you relearn? You let yourself feel. Oh, it's so pretty. You just hold you and you love you and you say, it's okay. I know you're really scared. We don't know what you're scared about right now because it was probably a long time ago and well, it's okay. You don't have to know. It's okay. You can just be scared. Oh, you're angry now? That's okay. Let's be angry. You want to go throw rocks? Sure. Let's do that. Make sure you're not standing in the line of fire, but it's okay. You're okay. Find the place where you can sit still and listen without judgment because we are all love. True that. And we only learn that we're not. And we, it seems like the work is just to unlearn that, which again does not have to occur over time in the strenuous, painful process. It's available in an instant. And if you allow it, it could be fun and easy. It doesn't have to hurt. It doesn't mean that you don't experience emotion that feel like pain that might be it seems like i guess it's fair to say there does seem to be like a balance point i don't know maybe this was true for me maybe not true for you where it was like every time i allowed myself into the moment until my pain balance was like felt through i couldn't it was like i was present and i but there was like It was like, oh, the door's open. Let's all go. So like all the pain that I had stuffed in there (laughs) was like, she opened the door. Let's roll. (laughs) Bring your friends. (laughs) And so there was sort of like a time before I could be present without it, (laughs) without allowing some things to move through me, which is again, it's like, I don't know if that's going to be your experience or if that's everyone's experience or what, but that's what it was like for me. And again, I sort of have an expectation that things have to be hard. And so if you can build an expectation otherwise, um, but even just acknowledging if that's happening, not to try to think yourself out of your feelings, but just to let them go. It's like, it's like, well, like just let like open a thing and just let it spill. All it's going to go, let it go rather than try to like I don't know, organize or solve it or understand it just like let it out that's another thing if i can let's say like one of the top five or ten things i could pass off when you're feeling intensely don't think <laughs> that is not the time to solve your emotions 
That's not the time to understand why your dad's that way or how you're gonna afford that later. It's not the time to like, to plan. You're not gonna solve, you're not gonna have a great conversation in your head about things. No, when you are feeling intensely, you let yourself feel intensely. You sit down and you say, baby, I'm with you right now. I know it sucks. Just breathe. Let's breathe. Then later, whenever you're out of fight or flight and your like system is back to some sort of homeostasis, then you can think. And this isn't just like this isn't just like metaphysical mumbo jumbo. Like look at the way that the brain works when like where the blood gl- goes and where different processes are housed when you're in fight or flight. It's like you can't, you can't, this is like the exec brain is shut down. It's useless. So just like try to let them, let them be like, let it be a binary system. I'm not sure how this translates or applies to like, so that's like thinking in a, from a low place. If thinking from a high place is equally unadvisable, <laughs> I'd say you get really good ideas then. I don't know, there's probably a middle way where it's like best to kind of like stitch into the world, but I don't know, I'm still an R&D on that. The other comment is just breathe. Yeah, it's just breathe. And going back to like the thinking system and thoughts, the way that my thinking system was, was like, you have to be really smart. You have to work really hard. You have to be unique in these ways. You have to blah, 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 blah. And so I had a lot of work in that model, probably not, but like the path to understanding included sorting through the like psychological or psyche need I had to be distinguishable by other people because of my intelligence or my uniqueness. So that means like I was afraid, like it didn't make sense to that mind. I couldn't bring into that thought system the idea that everything was so fucking easy because if it was easy and everybody could do it and that's what I was doing, then I wasn't worthy of love. How was I going to get love if I wasn't smarter, smart enough to figure that out? How was I going to get love if other everybody could do it? How would anyone know that I was special? And that's like a real like subconscious belief where it was like this is this is how you do things and I was trying to do something and like it didn't like first again like letting it be easy wasn't even in my awareness I could not fathom what it would be like to let something be easy I wouldn't even consider to ask that it wouldn't even be like oh how do we make this easy you'd be like no no no, we have to make it hard we have to make it hard so people know that we earned it no it's easy all easy and so if you have some resistance to that idea maybe your identity is also somewhat entangled to effort and that's fine and like that's a beautiful thing like appreciate it don't be mad at you accept it and be like wow that's really cool what a unique experience to have and if you don't want to have that experience anymore then you try to have another one and you might have some resistance to making that transition be easy unless you don't know that it's supposed to be hard Ideas. Ideas. We have so many about everything. So cute. And I, in trying to like express these things, what I would like to suggest is that here's what I found. It's like, oh, these flowers are so pretty. Trader Joe's has like the most beautiful roses for like, $4.99. Okay. Oh, like, look at this. Look at this. Oh my God. All right. So here's, here's what I experience. It's like inside there is this very beautiful flower. And so I close my eyes and I try to describe the flower to you. I say it's got this like really delicious peach haze color with a little pink that you don't expect and just like 
edges lined with yellow and it's layered so deliciously that you can't even it's just delicate and they it's so harmonious so i'm describing to you this flower i have in my head and you're hearing me and you're seeing me describe it and you're like that feels real that feels like something i can that feels like something it's because you have the same fucking flower inside <laughs> and if you close your eyes you can talk about it too <laughs> and so this is like the cool thing about like i'm i don't need to convince like all my only message like if i if like it, it's just like you you got it like you got it it's on the inside like you can like there's nothing understanding so what we're trying to do here i think is necessary to a point to realize you can't and then after that you just live <laughs> And if it's fun for you to understand, or like I tried to buck this as an expression of myself, I'm like, look, Shaylee, I hear what I, I see that you keep talking about this shit, but like everybody's got the rose inside, so what's the point? Like, can't you just do something else? Like, wouldn't you like to be a nice professional somewhere? <laughs> and I really tried to not do this, but like my whole life force like drained. It just this is how I'm currently inclined and I can't deny like my my thoughts were like Shaylee shouldn't you shouldn't you but my body was like sit down and press start so I've had a lot of ideas I've had to overcome to live this life because it doesn't make sense to me I didn't think about it it just sort of happened which is probably a function of my frame where I'm like, oh, chaos is natural, but maybe it's not, you know? So understanding that this is never complete and that it will never be possible for me to ever come up with the concrete system for operating, believing, being, or doing, I found that the most helpful thing, the most, like the only guiding star I really have is my awareness of what feels good to me. And that doesn't, that's not, from like it's like pleasure and feeling good i think are can be the same thing but it seems like we are afraid of the pleasure that is ultimately self-destructive but i found that if you allow your definition of self to expand to all of space and time so all versions of yourself all uh people what feels good to you to be in harmony with is like good for you. And so you just kind of like use that to get around. You can't fully intellectualize your own life. The full process of our life is just to learn to accept ourselves and our journey and to learn that we are worthy of love. So I agree with you and I will challenge that as well to say that the idea of learning and uh, journeys are sort of ideas but I do see that that's characteristic of I, I guess like going back to like then what what are our guidance systems and it's like is something healthier or less healthy and I see that more is it thriving or dying and it seems like more people who thrive ascribe to that thought process so to me it means like the more something is like dying or constricting the more ideas it's under or constrained by whereas the more something is thriving the less that it's constrained and so when we're looking at like what's true to me it's like approximating openness or approximating truth which is like less and less and less ideas so i'd say like that to me is true and that it's like pointing at the rose within it's not the rose but it's like talking about the rose at least that's my interpretation of what you've said how pretty is this oh my god okay i'm gonna wrap up um does anyone have anything else they would like to share or talk about or be or do i guess it's such a silly thing like to to come to like have i really like almost burnt myself alive trying to discover <laughs> stuff <laughs> only to discover really like just like to make things beautiful 
do what feels good. Do the best you can because it feels good. It is cool to be sensitive to deeper levels of experience and it feels anchoring to me when I have attempted to live superficially, meaning like just relative to the physical. So it's sort of like when I have allowed myself um, engaging with like it's like when people just talk about things and stuff that you can see to me that's very ungrounding because I'm attuned to like but there's more and so that's in my awareness and when I allow for it then I can allow for this uh, allow for like the 3d but it's like it's not at the expense of the 3d and to me 3d is like everything physical I guess which is to say like if you are journey if your journey is of understanding enjoy it if your journey is of something else enjoy it and the more that you enjoy it the more that there's to enjoy it seems but it does like it does seem like there's again there's like a balancing period where everything's kind of brought i guess you just don't worry about it you just don't worry about it you're right here you're right here oh damn here's a good book recommendation imhl the island by Aldous huxley he it's a huge so he's done some shit with if you follow nlp the guys that popularized it wrote about the practices of a hypnotherapist named eric milton i think and eric was homeboys with Aldous, and they worked so nlp is the way that our minds it's a it's just kind of like neuro-linguistic programming and it's basically like this system of thought that it's just basically like yo you have a map of the world in your head but it's not the world and so just to remember that the world that you're thinking about in your head isn't the world it's just like a an abstraction of it and that would be like of your life and of yourself and et cetera. It's like not the thing. It's an abstraction. And that there are ways that you can interact with the abstraction to make new choices available, similar to what I've been describing, but mostly based in language, neuro-linguistic programming. Um, although they do touch on different modalities like visual, audio, and kinesthetic. Nevertheless, um, Milton Erickson, the hypnotherapist that kind of like um, fathered this notice different ways that you can interrupt you can like manipulate the thought system to generate different states of being and Aldous, I'm not sure if this was before Eric or after Milton Milton Eric maybe I mixed this up um, he would put himself in a state of trance to write which is to say like his work is intensely fascinating to me because it is in aware it like it, he writes literature in a world that allows for that level of like internal freedom creativity he like i can't really describe it nevertheless island is about a utopian society just kind of like an island that exists that raises it's like founded on principles of enlightenment and it's really fucking practical he talks about the school system and the family structure and the political system is actually like what's fucked um or is fucking but it's a really really cool thought exercise to see an alternative to the way that we um perpetuate society Thanks so much for coming out today. The journey is the point. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Such a kicker, right? <laughs> I wish I had a nickel for every time I LOL'd at the absurdity of the human experience. Because it's like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. All that for this. When that was here, that was here the whole time. <laughs> All right. Have a great day, everybody.